three, two, one, and we're live. Welcome once again, HeroQuest fans. Okay, so um, <laughs> today was going to be just a quiet little stream on a Friday. You know, nothing, nothing really uh, special going on. Just your typical uh, waiting for HeroQuest news and not hearing any, just doing other stuff like game books. Well, turns out there's some big news <laughs> in the world of HeroQuest. Um, certainly uh, from our perspective, because, you know, we're not as big and popular as HeroScape. And if you didn't know, Hasbro is doing their big uh, PulseCon, because we already had Gen Con. That was the, for all the board games, but... Um, PulseCon is specifically for Hasbro products. It's their big hype show that they do. It's going on right now. And they're talking about G.I. Joe and um, Fortnite and Power Rangers and, uh, you know, all that Star Wars, all that stuff. Um, and, of course, everybody's anticipating that the big uh, thing they'll be talking about today and tomorrow is HeroScape. HeroScape, of course, was that game from the 2000s. It was really big. It was announced at Gen Con. It was coming back. Bigger than Hero Quest. Well, I never got into that game. I was never really that interested in it. I mean, glad to hear for all those fans that they'll be getting that game. But anyway, um, yeah, welcome Eudoxio, welcome Tech Spectre. Um, yeah, and Inspector Retro. I, I recognize you. Welcome, guys. Everybody else in the stream too. Elverg, thank you. Elviler, cheers, dead gamer, who's not here, but here in spirit always. Um, yeah, so anyway, there's news in the world of HeroQuest, um, and I know that I'm not going to be the first one to mention it, and other people are going to talk about it, and they're going to get way more views than me. I don't care. <laughs> it's not about that for me. I mean, yeah, I'd love to be popular, but man, that's a lot of pressure, like being the guy that has to talk about HeroQuest, rather than just one of the people that does it. So anyway... Yeah, nothing's bigger than HeroQuest for me. I mean, I like Battle Masters, I like Space Crusade, but yeah, I definitely have the nostalgia for HeroQuest. I spend a lot more time on that than these other games. There's definitely more of a foundation, there's more of a community for me. Um, it's not just about collecting, it's about the creator community, the community creations, whatever you want to call it. That spirit of creativity and, you know, fiddling around with the game and coming up with new things. Improvisation and all that. So anyway, um, let's uh, let's dive into it. So I hope you like my new four camera setup. I, I've been meaning to do this for ages, but I finally just sat down and said, okay, fine. I'm just going to have a camera pointed at every corner of the board. So this should uh, help tomorrow's stream. So unfortunately, we had to cancel the rant cast. Strange Bus um, let me know that we weren't doing the rant cast yesterday. And, um, you know, it's for personal reasons, so I don't uh, fault him at all. I think we'll have more to talk about in the next one for sure. I was kind of like, man, I'm not going to have anything to talk about HeroQuest-wise because nothing really has happened. Well, and then we get the news dropped on us. So, <laughs> hey, Seekashem, thanks. Yeah, you guys are the greatest because, like, I don't spend a lot of time on social media. I mean, I used to spend a lot of time on Facebook, way too much, and I've really cut back on that. I don't hang out on Twitter. I don't do Instagram. Um, I'm not really part of Reddit. I mean, if somebody tells me, oh, there's something cool, and the only way you can see it is to go there, you're like, okay, fine, I'll check it out. But, I mean, I won't create an account. I don't spend a lot of time. So I rely on other people to report it. And I think it's so great our community does that, where anything happens in any obscure corner of the Internet, somebody reports it to us, lets us know when HeroQuest fans are yield in. And um, <laughs> I noticed that Amalgamash, uh, kudos to him, on his channel, he starts. He started referring to it as the old inn, and it's like, yeah, you know, the Y E, like ye old. It's that's the thorn they talk about in in medieval literature. It's like Y is actually T H, so it would be pronounced the or the old inn. But I always say ye. That's what I've always done. I think it's easier to remember because you're saying it, and then the person knows to type it out. Of course, old with O L D E. Still pronounced old, but anyway. Yeah, so the news is that, okay, for a while we were speculating, okay, what's the next quest pack going to be? We know the um, Frozen Horror is out and everybody has it that wants it or is getting it. Um, 
we knew about the rogue heir of Elethorn. So small news there, which is that people are saying, okay, pre-orders like came out of the blue. Like before Hasbro said anything, there were pre-order websites all over the net. It was like, oh, is this coming out? And like, silent, silent. Okay, fine, it's coming out. <laughs> like, okay, what happened there? Who knows? But the Rogue Air Relithorn, people are saying, oh yeah, my pre-order. I just got an email saying it's going to be shipped. It's like, what? <laughs> so apparently some people are reporting on Facebook in the Yield In uh, HeroQuest fan, or HeroQuest Yield In Facebook community, which I'm no longer a part of. I think I was for a brief time, but I, I just don't like being on Facebook and doing stuff. It's just not my thing anymore. So anyway, um, they were saying, yeah, uh, ship is apparently it's shipping and people are going to get it like early October. So one person posted their tracking. It said shipped on October 7th. So it hasn't shipped yet, but okay. So they're going to get it by mid October instead of this December 1st release date. And I remember that, I think it was Polygon, that article came out. And they were finally acknowledging and talking about the Rogue Air of Elethorn, and they quoted uh, Chris Nato, a.k.a. and Carmine, a.k.a. Lord and Carmine, and who knows what other pseudonyms he uses, but our guy on the inside, cool guy. Um, see, because I'm not an industry insider. All I do is I just report stuff from a fan perspective. I don't have any special like VIP status. But it's cool that people like him will share stuff with us occasionally, you know, and other people will leak stuff. But anyway, that article was saying November, and that was quickly clarified, and they said, no, 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 not November, December. And Hasbro Pulse still says December 1st, but apparently some people are getting it early. So it might be a similar situation with the Rogue Heir of Elethorn uh, hero collection, you know, the knife-throwing rogue guys. Um, that might be sort of like the Frozen Horror, where they don't really publicize it, but the fact is you can get it early. Now, all the sites still say pre-order, but apparently these are people that pre-ordered it at one time. So like EB Games, Zing, what's the other one? Um, oh, it's that Australian website. Zavi? Zavi. Z-A-V-I. Anyway, people are saying, yeah, they pre-ordered like ages ago and forgot about it, and then now they're getting emails saying it's shipping or it's about to ship. So that's cool. So presumably then we'll get it much earlier. And of course, we know that the um, Mage of the Mirror, a.k.a. the Elf Quest pack, expansion is coming out spring 2023 because that was announced at gen con we haven't gotten any new info since then but anyway the new thing is like okay so i was thinking okay they're going to alternate between remaking old content and then releasing brand new stuff so the guardian commander of the guardian knights was new um the mythic tier stuff was new but of course game system turn of the witch lord keller's keep were um legacy stuff uh Frozen Horrors Legacy, um, Mage of the Mirrors Legacy, and so what's the next thing going to be? Well, I was thinking like, okay, is it going to be one of the European packs? Because they've covered all the North American stuff that we would have gotten back in the day. I mean, it's not just for North America anymore, it's for the whole world. HeroQuest starts in Europe, starts in the UK specifically, and then in the past, like every country kind of had their own version of HeroQuest, and it was, stuff was slightly different. Now it's pretty much, they're just, they've got the same pack for everybody it's just translated differently to varying degrees of quality apparently but so it was like what's the next thing going to be well apparently it's going to be a completely new okay so here's finally i'm took me forever to get to saying it but it's going to be a completely new pack like a lot of us were speculating based on this image that was shared by incarming on um on twitter was uh, oh it's it's going to be uh, the dark company it's going to be the um like from Advanced, Hero Quest Advanced Quest, um, Master Edition, where you had all the knights that you fought against. And he's like, nope, it's not that. It's like, okay, it's officially confirmed, it's not that. People are saying, oh, there's a knight involved, so maybe this is the Guardian Knights. And I thought, oh, of course, because this has been teased for a long time. The Guardian Knight, people were mad because it was an exclusive, it was a limited time, a lot of people didn't get it, it sold out in a day, it was a scalper paradise for a while with that. So it's like, okay, releasing a knight, perfect excuse to do so in a new pack maybe with an alternate sculpt or something okay so james wolf 82 sorry i didn't see you there welcome eb games is telling me my pre-order of air is available october 1st nice so james does that mean that's the date they're shipping because that would pre presumably mean that you'll get it within a week so like october 7th is when you'd get it so 
that's quite a bit early. Now, when I saw the EB Games website, I couldn't find it at all. Like, I had a hard time locating any of these links people were talking about. And when I did find them, like, it was, like, the wrong picture, and it said sold out and stuff like that. But, I mean, the, the pre-order pages are still up there. Big Bad Toy Store, a lot of these places. But, yeah. I think we pretty much know everything there is to know about that that small hero pack uh, with the two elven knife-throwing rogue characters, the rogue heir of Elethorn. In-store pickup, apparently. Huh, okay. So are you in Australia then, James, if you want to say? Or is this Canada? Because I don't think we have EB Games in the U.S. anymore. We've got uh, GameStop. It's <laughs> about as close as we get. Well, anyway, uh, so there's going to be a brand new pack. We don't know when it's releasing. And since um, PulseCon is, is focused almost entirely on these other properties, HeroScape, we just got thrown a little bone saying there's going to be a new pack. Yeah, there's one thing that we haven't seen up close. We haven't seen the back of the Rogue Air Hero card, yet, which may have some more details, as Tech Spectre is saying there in the chat, a good, or a good clear image of the new dagger art. Well, I didn't think there was going to be a new dagger, actually. I thought we we determined that, okay, we there's the skill cards. There's three skills, just like the knight had three skills. There's the hero card, which, yes, we haven't seen the back of it to see what details are there. And for equipment, um, there's the bandolier. And I thought that was it. Am I wrong about that? Three, four, five... Oh, maybe you're right. Yeah, because it'd be six cards. Because there's a male and a female version, so there's like just a whole copy, duplicate set of cards with just slightly altered artwork. Like if it's a close-up of the character, you see like the, the female version instead of the male version. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, okay, Eudoxia, that makes sense. I'm just forgetting what we went over. <laughs> it seems like a lifetime ago, yeah. So, yeah, it was going to be that the um, the bandolier is a piece of equipment that functions just like a toolkit. And as long as he has it, he's considered to have at least one dagger that's basically infinite, like an infinite bag of daggers. So he can throw it and he doesn't lose it. He doesn't have to retrieve it. It's just, I guess it just appears back in your bag or whatever. But then if he also has a dagger card, I was just imagining, okay, well, what if you're playing the Frozen Horror and a... Ice Gremlin steals his bandolier, if that's possible, then, oh, he'd just have a regular dagger left. But he needs the dagger to, he needs the bandolier to be able to do two of his skills with his knife throwing. It's like Opportunistic Striker, I forget them all. Yeah. But it's like, that piece of equipment gives him an, uh, a dagger that he never loses essentially or you could consider him to say he has an infinite bag of daggers and he only he can use it so somebody else picks it off of his corpse if he gets killed well they don't get those special abilities but they would get one dagger i guess and a toolkit or no they wouldn't because they can't even use it so i guess it would just be they'd just be saving it for him until the next quest when you bring bring in another uh another rogue yeah all right so let's uh, let's talk about this new pack. So I was fully prepared to assume that they were going to try to remake one of the European packs, or they were going to release another hero collection. I mean, they kind of surprised us with the elf pack. Instead of giving us some new colored dice and some new um, character pads like they did for the Frozen Horror, instead they gave us, um, or they will be giving us, a bunch of furniture. Not an entire new set of furniture, but several pieces of furniture that are more of like an elven, like wood elf kind of style, I guess. Which are completely un unnecessary, but, you know, we didn't need extra dice either, but that was kind of a cool thing. Wizard could love a bandolier. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, though. On the back of the hero card, there's usually some more details about the hero character. But other than that, we pretty much know what they have. They have those skills. So instead of having spells, they have skill cards. So you use the skill cards, they get used up. 
Except in this case with the rogue, it seems like they're passive abilities. People have, have mentioned that they seem to be passive. So he always has the ability to like pass through an enemy and like get behind him and attack him. He always has the ability to throw a knife. And when he throws a knife, if his enemy target is next to like an ally, he gets an extra die. And if he combines the dagger with the short sword, he can get like a second attack in certain cases. But all of this is predicated on the idea that he has the bandolier. If he doesn't have the bandolier anymore, then he doesn't get those perks. James Wolf, 82, says, Wizards of Morkar and Ogre Horde are amazing, surprise, and American releases and in the works. Well, here's the thing. A lot of people have said stuff online, and a lot of it could be just people blurting stuff out. They may have no idea what they're talking about. And we don't have a way to verify it unless somebody from the company says, yes, this is correct. So I've had people tell me, oh, you should never expect any of the European stuff to come out because in remake form because Hasbro doesn't have the rights to it. They never presented any evidence for this claim, but they just said it. It's like, how is that the case? I know for a while it was rumored that Stephen Baker had retained the rights for all the European HeroQuest stuff, that somehow it was like up to him, but that wasn't true. And Carmine was like, nope, not true. I mean, uh, Stephen Baker is a cool guy. Um, he's one of the key figures in the creation of HeroQuest originally. But his relationship with Hasbro now, I mean, he's more of like a contract worker. He's uh, like a guest writer. I mean, I, I think he's even retired. I could be wrong about that, but I think he's retired. And it's cool that he comes in and does stuff, but he doesn't have like decision-making power to like change the project. I mean, he's not the project head, so does that makes sense. But I mean, I would think, yeah, if that what people were saying were true, that somehow he had control of like certain aspects of the of the franchise that Hasbro would be like, yeah, let's buy those off you. <laughs> let's get let's get you to sign off on that stuff so that we can use it. Like, why would they not? Right. But if that's not the case, then other people were saying, well, no, no, no. Games Workshop controls all that stuff. And it's like, well, wait a minute. Games Workshop was just as involved, apparently with the original Hero Quest as all these other packs. Like, you think about all the miniatures were Citadel miniatures. Games Workshop, right? The Warhammer guys. A lot of the artwork was from Warhammer in the original version from 89. And yes, some of that was removed when the North American version came out, but a lot of it stayed. And yes, Wizards of Morkar, the Wizards, are all Citadel figures. Um, so are the Mercenaries. And uh, against the Ogre Horde, all four of those Ogre sculpts are all theirs but i mean frozen horror got um the mercenaries and those were the same sculpts from citadel from games workshop um citadel is just the name of the line the cat uh catalog but i mean avalon hill is part of hasbro so is wizards of the coast tsr all that is under hasbro now so um whether it's the mercenaries in frozen horror or it's the ogres in Mage of the Mirror. I mean, all those are Citadel, and they were able to make those. I mean, you notice in the new, the remake versions, all the sculpts are, are different. They're clearly inspired by the originals, but I mean, they, they have a different look. So they're not stepping on anybody's toes. They've changed the names of certain things, you know, Blackfire Pass to Darkfire Pass, World's End Mountains, you know, Sea of Talons, all that stuff, Dread Warriors. They obviously did that because, um, yeah, it's like they worked with Games Workshop and said, okay, we can use this stuff, but we're not going to use your trademark stuff. No Fimmers that type of thing. Abominations. Yeah, so Elverg says Baker left Hasbro in 2019. Just been doing consultant work with Hasbro now. See, that would make sense to me. Uh, Seek Hashem, Stephen Baker now is his own game design studio. He's gone independent. Yeah. Well, see, that that sounds like what I've heard, too. In other words, he's not sitting there at Hasbro going, this is what we should do. But if they want to bring him in, they can. He can stroll in and work with them. It's not like Stephen Baker owned HeroQuest and then Hasbro took it away from him. That's not how... It was never that way. He worked for Milton Bradley, a.k.a. Hasbro, back then. But the new project, I mean, they basically just brought him in. He wrote some quests and then... Yeah, what has he done lately? Well, he's done the voiceovers for those commercials on Avalon Hill, you know, the hype commercials. So, 
I think that's cool. I think that he still does stuff like that. I think is is nice. But yeah, it's it's kind of like actors in a movie. I mean, they they do their they do their stuff and then they move on to other things. And by the time you watch it, it's you know years later. Yeah. But anyway, all this is going back to the idea that some people were telling me or posting online as if they knew, which I don't think they really know. They're saying, "Oh, this stuff can't be released because," but that doesn't seem like it makes any sense. I would think. The same things that held back the release of HeroQuest in 2021 would be holding back this other stuff. The same barriers. In other words, they had to get the uh, the copyrights or the trademarks uh, for the, the names and the, the themes and designs back because um, Chaosium or whatever had it. Because, I mean, um, it was HeroQuest, Gloranth or whatever. Like it was a it was a totally different company had it so they had to get that they had to make sure they shut down uh, Tsu Quest or allow them to continue as long as they got rid of the Hero Quest name all that stuff they had to secure all that stuff and then they had to probably sit down with somebody at Games Workshop and say okay we're not going to use your Chaos Warriors we're going to change it to something else it's going to be okay yeah and Tech Specter you're saying that they have everything from the original printing. Well, see, I've heard that too, and I, I take that to mean they have all the physical assets, so they have all the notes. So remember the um, the dwarf and wizard quest pack stuff that um, Luca Pashi was talking about. Like, there's how we have most of the stuff now, but not all of it. Whereas they're saying, yeah, they have everything. So they they either have the originals or they have photocopies. They have the models, which is great because I think for a long time there was speculation that they'd thrown all that stuff away that it was in the dustbin, you know, and unless people had taken it home, you know, cleaned out the desks when they left, but it was gone. So the fact that they have it and they have the right to use it is great because that means they don't have to, we don't have to worry that, oh, it just won't come out. So the only thing preventing it then would be them deciding it's going to be profitable and getting it done. Now, as far as the mythic stuff, People have speculated on that, and I'm not going to say everything I've heard because some of it may be baloney or me just speculating, but there's people in the collector community who are, like, worried. They're like, oh, no, they're going to release the Mythic stuff that was exclusive, and now my stuff won't be special anymore. It won't be valuable anymore. It's like, why would that be true? Because it's still, you know, it's like if they reprint a baseball card. It's like, oh, no, they reprinted the baseball card. Now my original baseball card isn't worth anything. It's like... Yeah, but it's a reprint. The reprint is a new product. I mean, if you just want to have something that looks like the old product in your hand, you know, like a reissue of an action figure, that's why you buy it. But if you want the, I don't know, the street cred or the value of having the original original, you still have that. So I don't see the big deal. I mean, and Carmine, he's said a lot about sticking it to the scalpers. I mean, they're sick and tired. I mean, think about it. If you're a company... There's all this money you could be making from selling a product, but instead people on eBay are like reselling it and reselling it because you decided to make it a limited release or you didn't think it was going to be worth it or whatever and you made it now. It's like you can cut into that market. You can undercut those guys by just re-releasing it. Yeah, you're still going to have people that are like, yeah, but this is this is the one in the shrink wrap. This is the original original. But if you just want the toy or you just want the game, Here's a new copy of it. It's one-to-one -one identical. Yeah. Yeah, it still holds value, Elviler. Exactly. But the thing is, if they really want to... Because it, it, it seems to me like Avalon Hill, you know, Hasbro's division, Hasbro's subsidiary, El, uh, Avalon Hill, um, has been given free reign to do what they think is best with this game. I mean, as long as it sells, right? Seems to be the case. And they seem to want to honor as many fans as they can. Yeah. So they so that's why they had the whole big thing with um, the Frozen Horror. They released it as is, warts and all. And they also released, like, Into the Northlands, where it's like, here's all these corrections. I mean, I'm going, I was listening to my old video where I was talking about all the ways to easily fix the Frozen Horror, because I considered it broken. And pretty much all of my stuff they addressed in some way or form or fashion, except for the um, polar warbear double attack. 
that one they didn't really address other than to just clarify yeah it's as bad as you remember the best thing about hero quest is more hero quest for all the hero questers i'm with you on that one at Udaxio. tech specter says original mythic is so full of holes it's holy maybe uh they want their they want things their friends don't have mythic tier we'll see i know there's people who bought the hero quest mythic tier just so they could sell it resell it there's other people who bought it just so they could keep it in the box as like a treasured me memento but for me it's like what good is that stuff if i can't use it to play it so that's why i've tried to i mean i haven't played the new quests like prophecy of Telor, spirit queen's torment crypt of perpetual darkness i haven't played those on the stream but as you've been watching in my videos i've been using those miniatures i've been using those extras you know fit them in where i can i've been using the guardian knights a lot not to show off and you know beat my chest and be like what do they call that where you're like showing off all the stuff that you have that your friends can't have flexing yeah it's like ooh, look at me i have junk that you don't have it's like no no, no. that's not what it's about i'm just i would rather use it bring joy to somebody you know rather than just hoard it away in a you know vault somewhere that's my my thought because i'm not going to resell that stuff who am i kidding i'm i bought it because i wanted to use it more people get into it it's better for everyone see i agree with you l Viler. i'd be more that i'm glad that hero quest has not come back just to be a collector's item and just fade away and disappear again and i was kind of concerned that after um mage of the mirror that they might just be like yep good enough and then stop like i'm not wanting hero quest to become oversaturated like some franchises <laughs> star wars where they just keep churning out stuff and then the quality just keeps going down and down and nobody cares and like people start to hate it like i don't want that to happen hey ribby welcome yeah so we're just talking about all things hero quest again so there's finally news yeah so let me just check i've had PulseCon running in the background just to see if there was anything yeah, they're still talking about Marvel, I think. Not that interesting to me. But anyway, yeah. Um, so let's uh, let's get to talking about this this new thing. Yeah, they they definitely want to undercut the scalpers, and so I'm glad about that. All the new Hero Quest stuff is retail, and it's going to be worldwide. So all these countries that had Hero Quest. Back in the day. I mean, this isn't some like global initiative. This is just me sympathizing with those fans from all these other countries who had Hero Quest back in the 80s and 90s. And when the remake comes out and like, oh, it was only going to be North America and Brazil and Australia and um, the UK. Aw. <laughs> like that, that would be disappointing. But it's like, no, no, it's going to like all kinds of places. And probably some places that never had it before. And yeah, they, you know, the UK fans would probably be like, wait a minute, why did you change the rules? Like, I don't remember these rules. These are the North American rules. But they still kind of threw those people a bone. They took um, some of the unique stuff that was in the European version and crammed it back in there, like the bracers and the hand axe and the holy water. Cheers, Dave Gamer. So, yeah, I mean, that, again, I think they're trying to appeal to the broadest swath of fans. And they have not updated the companion app in a while. People have been asking, well, aren't the Mythic quests, don't they need to go in there? Because they put the Mythic heroes in there. You know, the Bard, the Druid, and the Warlock. But I, apparently they're not going to put them in there until such time, if any, that those get re-released. So it's like, hmm, interesting. They didn't say absolutely not. I mean, people have called Hasbro and... Like the reps have said, oh, there are no, currently no plans to re-release the Guardian Knights, and there's currently no plans to re-release the Mythic stuff. But currently no plans doesn't mean never ever. It just means that's what they've been told to say. Until the deal is done. Because, uh, yeah, as others have said, in the world of board games, it's different than video games, where, you know, they could be working on the game right up until the day of release, you know, day one patches. With board games, they got to plan ahead. So the stuff could be done like a year in advance, for all we know, sitting in a warehouse just waiting to be, you know, sent to the printers or whatever. Eudoxia says they're not going to translate the rogues, though. At least that's what Hasra Spain told us. Really interesting. 
Huh. That's kind of strange to me because all they had, all they'd have to do is just translate. Well, they'd have to translate twelve cards. Six of them are just repeats of the other, and that little piece of parchment, the little folded uh, linen finish thing that tells the little story, the little backstory. Someone else was complaining the other day. Well, I, they don't really. That's not really fair to say it was complaining, but we had a discussion about how the heroes need to be blank slates that you can just create yourself because you're playing a board game it's not it's it's a really if you want to call it role playing it's a really light rpg hero quest is extremely light on the role playing like you can do as much or as little of that as you want it's not like dragon strike where you know there's dialogue for the monsters to say and there's you know stuff like that it's that's not in there it's a board game if you want to layer that on there yourself when you're playing you easily can very easily but the barbarian i mean other than the general area of the world he comes from, we don't know anything about him. We don't know anything about the dwarf, the wizard, the elf. But then we get this storyline for the rogue heir of Elethorn. They talk about the prince. You know, you watch those videos, it's like, okay. But they do give you a backstory for the barbarian in the frozen horror. And if you watch the commercial, it's like, okay, it's the female barbarian and she's pulling her donkey through the frozen pass. And it's like, but that's just, to me, that's just a sample if you want your barbarian to have some elaborate backstory, just create it. You do it yourself. You don't have to use that one. That's just an example. Just like how the Marvel Winter Special gave the heroes names and, you know, gave their outfits a certain, like, color and everything. It's like, that's just an example. The Dave Morris novels, they gave them personalities. But if you read Fellowship Before, the heroes are one way. If you read the individual adventures like Tyrant's Tomb, it seems like it's a different barbarian. If you read The Screaming Spectre, it's a wizard, yeah, but he's like a totally different wizard than the one from Fellowship Before. So it's like your dwarf might be different than somebody else's dwarf, and that's how it should be. Yeah, Eudoxio, it's 100% right, because the fans will translate them. But they definitely will make it more accessible if they translate. Because I don't know, I mean, I assume... People, I've never been to Spain, but people speak Spanish there. They don't speak English. I mean, maybe some people do. People can be bilingual in any country, but why not translate it to the dominant language of that region so it'll be accessible to the most people? I mean, yeah, you, you don't have to use the cards. You can just chuck the cards away and just grab the figure, and you could use it for anything you want. I mean, the Guardian Knights that I got, I originally thought, yeah, I'm going to use these guys as mercenaries. Of course, then they released the Frozen Horror with the extra mercenaries. So it's like, okay, yeah. They could be NPCs. You know, people don't like the Bard as a hero. Well, he could be an NPC. All right, so all that stuff. But yeah, we're getting the the Rogue Air apparently early. Unofficially early. Um, don't know much more about the um, Mage of the Mirror, but here's the new thing that's coming out. So let's get a screen up here finally. Okay, so we got a little thing for Twitter here. Uh, let's switch our overlay. Kudos to El uh, Elviler for the awesome overlays. All right, you can see all my tabs there. Okay, so somebody, Patrick Later, your Doom ship. Will there be any way to get the past limited release characters and current ones? And then t Zargon on Twitter, who is definitely not Doug Hopkins, says, "I've heard the king is gathering an army of armored fighters, but there's nothing. They are nothing compared to my dread warriors." So, okay, obvious tease then is obvious. All right, and then the other thing is, so we've got this picture, and this is Encarmin. Let's see, can you see that on screen? Yeah, this is from a phone. With today being the start of Hasbro PulseCon 2022, I thought it'd be worth worthy of a smile and recognize the moment of Frozen Horror's subtle announcement. The day the HeroQuest community was able to affirm that our beloved game was truly back for good. Thanks, Craig Van Ness, for being such a good sport that day. But then you see this manipulated photo, 
Wait a minute, that's not the frozen horror in the background. That's like a totally new image. And then our own Al Viler says, whoa, that's not frozen horror artwork, though. This is new. What are you teasing us with? I love this. I mean, he's just like dangling this in front of us. And we're like, wait a minute, what? Uh, Goji Radoho says, looks suspiciously like a knight to me. Hasington, maybe it's the Sir Ragnar bundle. Where we get to find out exactly why he's the king's favored knight. As he leads the charge against forces of Zargon. As a friendly party controlled figure leads the quest. Well, anyway, yeah. So lots of speculation was kicked off by this. But Encar means like, nope, it's not the Dark Company. It's something new. So, okay, something new. So this looks like a whole box. So this looks much more ambitious than just a little pack of heroes. Because I, I had all kinds of speculation. I was thinking, oh, is this a player versus player module? Is this um, a mercenaries pack? I mean, it seems like a convenient way to bring the knight back. But let's look at another picture here. This looks a little better. Oh, you already fan translated them. Yeah, Eudoxio fan translations I love because that's what we do as fans. So, yeah, this is uh this was let's see, Inspector Retro posted this, but also I think it was originally from was it you that did it? I I put it into the I started a thread on you Yolden about it. It's an untitled expansion is what this is. We don't it's it's something new though. Eudoxio Yeah, Eudoxio was the first one I think who shared this. It's like an interpolated upscaled image. So we're trying to figure out what this is. So we see it looks like the barbarian in the background. And then there's an elf over here. Dwarf, wizard, but then this looks like a knight different knight than what we've seen before he's got a cape with some fur trim on it he's got a, a helmet with a crest helmet hey <laughs> remember i was saying with the guardian knights why don't they have helmets i mean yeah it's just like in the movies it's like oh the actor wants to show his pretty face to everyone but it looks like they're facing off against some foes here and one of them looks like it's either a guy with it's a guy with pointed ears and i can't tell if that's like a mohawk or a helmet so it might be an orc, might be an elf. This other person looks like an elf with a dagger or a curved sword of some kind. And there's another figure that's going up against the knight who also has a red cape of some kind and a shield. They're going shield to shield, sword to sword. Except there's no helmet or because it's distorted. I mean, it could be like a face mask. But it almost looks like a doppelganger, like an, an evil knight. So the knight's fighting another knight. The dwarf is fighting an orc, maybe? But then there's an elf fighting another elf. Is there a barbarian? So I was kind of speculating, well, maybe this is, uh, in this new adventure, maybe there's like evil versions of the heroes. There's like anti-heroes that you have to fight. I mean, who knows? And there's speculation. I mean, Encarmine, he drops hints all over the place. And I'm sure he's being very careful about what he says, because he knows we're going to speculate about it, but he also wants us to speculate and get hyped. So is this a prequel? Is this a prequel to something that we've had before? I mean, it's a new adventure, but is this is this uh, Sir Ragnar, as, as one of the people was speculating? Is this something that takes place before um, the Elf Quest pack? Is it a follow-up? I mean, is this like part two of Mage of the Mirror? Like, even though there wasn't one. Um, I was wondering, oh, is this the Dwarf Quest Pack or the um, Wizard Quest Pack? Because someone was pointing in the background, this this almost looks like a spider character. Like a mermaid, like a centaur, like a half spider, half person. Of course, it's so hard to tell. I mean, it looks like a top half of a woman, and then there's it's hard to tell what that is behind her. Is that part of her, or is that some other character, some creature? Is this like the uh, man scorpion from Dragon Strike? I mean, TSR, TSR is now part of... Witches of the Coast, which is a subsidiary of Hasbro, just like Avalon Hill. So, just because it's in a D&D game doesn't mean it's restricted at off-limits. Of course, people are like, oh, they shouldn't mix D&D and HeroQuest. It's like, well... I mean, when you think about it, HeroQuest started out as kind of a variant inspired by D&D. I mean, you could say Lone Wolf was, too, but it's its own thing now. What's this uh, figure in the corner? It almost looks like some smoke and a green face with pointed ears. Is this a genie? 
Is this a statue? Is this a monster? Or am I reading too much into that and it's just some detail in the background? This almost looks like a ghost. What are these? Are these spectral figures? Is it just, just smoke? Are you supposed to imagine this is something? But it looks like the heroes are fighting somebody. There's the four heroes and there's a knight. Is that a mercenary? Or is that a guardian knight type character? Are they fighting elves? Orcs? What is it? There's no title here. It doesn't say what it is. Of course, when they teased the Frozen Horror, they didn't tell us what that one was either. But the the artwork was obviously inspired by the original artwork of the Barbarian Quest Pack. Of course, we never got the Dwarf or Wizard Quest Packs. So, But the fact that they retained the, the uh, notes from those old packs makes me think that those will be maybe completely original. But they wouldn't have to be. It could be anything they want. Let's go back to the chat. So I've done a lot of speculating there. We don't know. But the fact that they appear to be releasing a whole new box of stuff instead of just a hero pack or a furniture pack or some dice or, you know, a, a one-off free quest makes me think this is pretty big. I mean, they're, they would be ambitious. They would be um, coming into their own, feeling confident that, hey, we can create a new adventure and it's going to be well-received going to be profitable because you remember the mythic tier only certain people got those not everybody got those and yeah they released um into the northlands for second tunnels of zorazel um rogar's hall and what was the other one new beginning new beginnings so like all those were free quests but i mean you got to remember they released 37 quests within the mythic tier and there were some typos and things but i think generally they were praised but they didn't have a large audience like this could be. So they're going out on a limb here because this is not going to be a nostalgic product. This is going to be something new. But if they have a good handle on what the fans want, I think it could be pretty pretty great. So I'm excited to hear this. And when will it come out? Who knows? But if they follow suit, if they release like a small pack and a big pack every year, maybe we wouldn't get it until 2024. But if they're releasing the Rogue early... I mean, two big packs in one year, that's kind of a risk. Or would they stagger the release a little bit? Like have 2023 20, be the year of the Mage of the Mirror pack. It's 10 quests. And I'm sure they'll, just like, I mean, we had that whole big thing with Amalgamash was saying, like, man, why did they change the the body points of the Ogre, you know, from 10 to 5? And then that got us all talking about, well, what other changes might be in that book? We have no idea, if any. Or are they going to do like with Frozen Horror, like having Into the Northlands? Like they're going to release another free quest that says, by the way, here's some playtesting to make it a little more forgiving because it's such a difficult quest pack. You know, or will they change more stuff? But yeah, um, that's going to be a pretty extensive thing. And are they going to release another, like, let's just imagine what this might be. Is this going to be a box of miniatures? with a quest book inside that has 10 more quests. I mean, it seems to be the pattern they're following. It could be 14. You know, for all we know. Seems like that's what they've been shooting for. I mean, the 10 quests, that was what they were doing in, with the expansions in North America in 92. Elf and Barbarian were both 10 quests. You know, three solo quests, a two-part quest at the end that was super hard. You know, the rest being group quests. But I mean, like, uh, Against the Ogre Horde was only seven quests. And uh, Wizards of Morkar was only five quests. And I mean, the Dark Company was a four-part super quest that was included in a special version of the game system called Master Edition or Advanced Hero Quest. No, Hero Quest Advanced Edition. Because <laughs> Advanced Hero Quest is a whole other product. Anyway. Yeah. I'm just spinning out of control with the... Um, speculation but anyway so yeah ponder that what is that image it's obviously a, a new expansion that's coming out at some time so maybe just like the frozen horror we'll just have to wait a year and see what it what it really is so that's cool anyway um back to back to uh what we were doing before all this excitement So let me just flip this thing. Okay, so I've been reading game books. 
So in the past, we've read these uh, Hero Quest game books. Um, I started reading some other ones from my collection. You know, I in the last uh, couple years, I think right before COVID and maybe into COVID, I bought some nostalgic books and some that I'd never seen before as a kid, but I certainly would have loved if I'd had them in the late late eighties, early nineties. And I figured we'd do a little bit of reading. Elviler says, probably find out more official news about it after Mage of the Mirror comes out next year. Yeah, you never know. I mean, I feel like a lot of the marketing for HeroQuest, as we've talked about, has been a little odd. Like, they don't say anything, and then all of a sudden it just, like, pops up somewhere. Like, somebody says, oh, hey, I got this freebie in the mail. Or, all of a sudden, you know, some website just puts it up for pre-order, and that's how we hear about it. I think... From what Encarmine has been saying, I get the impression they're trying to be a little bit more organized and calculated with all this stuff. Because, yeah, there's something to be said for viral marketing. I mean, if you... I'm just imagining being part of a company where I have, like, a budget, a marketing budget, and it's like, okay, if I can't, you know, put it on TV and put it on big billboards, I'm going to advertise it how I can. Like, get influencers to talk about it, you know, drop hints here and there, you know, put stuff on social media... Yeah, that's what they would do. And if these companies are like accidentally leaking it ahead of time or are they purposely like given permission to do that? But the fact that the the company seems slow to kind of respond to it makes me wonder like what's going on. But anyway, if if that's just a case of them being disorganized, I hope yeah, they can get more organized. I mean, they did a lot of work for Gen Con. I was impressed the amount of Hero Quest stuff they had going for that. And since HeroQuest is not, I mean, it's one of their brands now. Originally, it wasn't. It just seemed like it was going to be a one-off. Like, it's right up there with all the other stuff. But I'm sure it's not as big as Star Wars and G.I. Joe and Power Rangers and, you know, Fortnite and all that stuff. Transformers. It's not, probably not bringing in as much money and viewers as those other things yet. You know, even HeroScape is going to be huge. So, it's like, okay, do we get... The back burner, you know, do we get as much... Is, is as much money and time allocated to us as the other stuff? Probably not. But at the same time, it's nice, you know, to get little tidbits here and there. And maybe they'll be a little more organized moving forward. Dark Comedy is 13 parts over four board, full boards. Well, that's the thing, though, Edoxio. There, I've never tried playing it. Some people were like, oh, you need four boards to actually play it. No, you don't. You need one board. But it's like, yeah, you're you're going through a section of the dungeon, and it's walled off. So unless you're using pass-through rock, you're only going to see a small section of the board, like a couple of connected rooms. But then you're going to go off the board. Like there's a, a door, an exit door that leads to the side. But And then you're supposed to clear the board, set it up again, and you're in this new section. And you can go back, and everything comes back. Like the treasures don't come back, but the monsters come back. And it's like, well, what if the party gets separated? Well, it's not going to happen because, for the most part, I don't think you can cross over until everybody crosses over. Again, unless you had one person that was using pass-through rock to like go into another section. But I guess they just have to wait for everybody then. They get isolated from the group and they have to wait until everybody comes back. And in that one, you're fighting dark warriors. So the mercenaries figures are used as bad guys where, like, if... Any skulls you roll against them, when they roll their defense, if they get one black shield, they block all the skulls. So people were complaining, like, oh man, these guys are so hard to kill. They have only one body point, but they're just, they can just defend against everything, just about. I mean, black skull, black shields are hard to roll, because there's one in six chance. So it was like, oh, kill them with magic. And even though like all those four boards worth of material all runs together, it's like it seems like that's going to be a real marathon. That's going to be a real gauntlet. To get through because you can't go to the armory you can't you know have your stuff recharge but there are like ways that they fix that they give you a lot of potions there's certain rooms where it's like oh you know the the room has some magical thing in it that gives you your spells back or heals you or you know something like that restores your mind points so they have ways to kind of like keep the tension going and yet make it so it's not insurmountable there's a couple errors in the dark company too where like, if you go to one area, there's a piece of furniture, and then if you run to the other side, 
the same piece of furniture is there and it's like wait a minute there's only one cupboard how can you have two or two weapons racks so people were like oh you got to buy like multiple copies so that you can have the exact number of furniture and i'd just be like no the furniture is just background i mean you just if you need to reuse furniture you take it from the one room and you put it in the other because it's just a game you know you put something else and say okay fine it's it's a what it's a it's a torture rack now it's like whatever but it has a lot of like little story elements in it. So yeah, the Dark Company would have been cool. But it sounds like for now, you're not going to get a remake version of it. You're just going to have to homebrew it yourself. One quest in 13 parts on one board. They can optionally be played on four boards and a really big table. Yeah. Well, and I was wondering, like, you could have uh, <laughs> like four Zargons. Like, each one controls their own board. You could have like a big party thing going on. But yeah, officially, officially, you're supposed to clear the board. Elviler says, sounds extremely complicated. Should just adapt it into a quest book of separate quests. You could do that. You could just have, like, 13 pages. Yeah, just a booklet. And it's just like, okay, when you go to this section, this is section A, B, C, D, E, F, G, whatever. In the original version, so you would open up the game system box and it would, you'd have the mercenaries on their sprues with their weapons 12 mercenaries 24 weapons so if they remade it it'd probably be 24 figures because they don't use the removable figures and then instead of like a, a quest book it would it was a poster so you unfold this poster and it would have it would show four pictures of the board it would be black and white, but then there would be sections in different colors. So it's like, okay, the purple section, and then you go to the notes, and it would have, like, purple, and it would say, like, all of the quest notes for that one. And the red section, and the green section, and the blue section, and you're going through all these. And it was kind of an easy way to do it. When Phoenix, on uh, Hero Quest by Phoenix at, or dot, um, yield in dot com, he changed it to, like, North American format. It's actually harder to read. It's harder to figure out because he just did it with... The colors that you see in the North American game, you know, the monsters are green, traps are orange, the background is like dark brown, dark red. It's actually dark brown, yeah. Elberg says, yeah, I adapted it into 13 quests on HeroQuest uh, GM. Oh, cool. Yeah, I mean, it came out 30 years ago, so... People have made their own variations on it. I've never actually played it myself. I think it'd be cool to play. It's just, it'd be really, really hard. And it would require a big time commitment. So it's like, you're sitting people down and saying, we're going to play four really hard quests. And if you convert it from like the European rules, where all the monsters have one body point, except for the two boss monsters that you fight, because you're trying to stop these, um, basically knights of the, of the empire who went rogue or turned to chaos. And so they're bad guys now. They're traitors. Um, yes, if you if you convert those, because yeah, you have all these chaos warriors and mummies and fimmers who would be one body point in the European rules. If you convert over to North American rules, all of a sudden those guys are stronger with two, three body points. It'd be a much more difficult quest. It'd be a real challenge. And I think that's how they intended it. You know, they'd say, okay, you beat the fourteen quests, and if you think you're really good, you can take on this really tough one. Have you posted that anywhere, Elver? Nope. Yeah. Well, I, I bet you there'd be people interested in it. Well, the old joke is that once you... Sh people don't actually care about your custom content for HeroQuest. All they want is something to uh, riff on. Something to steal and modify <laughs> into their own rules. And I'll, I'll admit, there's a lot of stuff that like I've done that. I mean, I guess like the combat cards, I didn't change those much. I think I just corrected some spelling errors but i pretty much used them as intended i think when i first played i gave them to all the heroes not just the combat guys but i mean like the the evil wizard deck like i modified that from the original version that uh shang put out like my custom armory is based on like two or three other custom armories that people have made i even use the same artwork from some different people Like the German dice, there's no instructions on how to use those. But, I mean, I kind of came up with my own system. But uh, lots of people have used those for different things. You know, the black dice for stronger attacks, the green dice for stronger defense. 
Blue dies for stronger monster defense. Eudoxio says, if they not say something about the Dark Company by the end of this year, is in my plans to adapt it to the new version like I did the Japanese. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. How much would you be mad if you put out something and then they sent you a cease and desist letter and said, nope. <laughs> we're get, we're actually selling an official version of this. I mean, they haven't done that. I think they, from what I understand, the only people that they've shut down, I think, were the the people doing the anniversary Hero Quest thing, the Game Zone, made them change the name, and somebody released I forget which one it was, maybe Spirit Queen's Torment, where all they did was they scanned the book from the Mythic tier and they just corrected the typos. The mistakes and they released it online and they were like nope can't do that take it down so they forced them to take it down cease and desist letter so i don't know they would have had to do something more transformative than just fixing fixing the errors in it but it also made people speculate oh does this mean that they're going to release it for real like a new version just like how they re-released the um the Hero Quest game system in retail with a smaller box that has the clear plastic you can take off. So you're not just like, you know, having to pull really hard to get the figures out and the box doesn't take up so much empty space. Eudoxio says, maybe I can try to contact Incarmi before starting it just in case. That's eh, a good idea. I mean, sometimes you like, you'll ask him stuff and he'll just be like, eh, I'll have to wait and see. And other times he'll give you like a quick direct answer. It's like, that's cool. Nice to have somebody uh, on the inside. Chris Nato. Yeah. All right. So we got a little bit of time here. I think uh, we've done a lot of... I mean, I'm almost making up for lost time because last time we had almost no hero quest to talk about whatsoever. Nothing had really happened. But yeah, I plan to uh, do a stream tomorrow. And we're going to try again to do our interview with um, Covert Nerd. Well, he's interviewing me. I'm not interviewing him. That would be cool. Interview him sometime. But yeah, he's going to be interviewing me. We're going to be talking about kind of what we think now. The, the dust is kind of settled and this Hero Quest thing has taken off. Because before we were talking about, like, you know, what the remake is going to be like. And then, okay, it's out. What do you think? What's next? But um, yeah, we ran into technical issues last time, so we didn't get it recorded. But anyway, I'm going to be doing that early. And The Strange Boss is doing a stream tonight, I believe. Yeah, tonight. So I think he usually starts around 8 or 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. He's going to be doing like a massive, I'm like, <laughs> like get, get some rest, brother. <laughs> because he is going to be doing like a marathon of Star Wars games. There's a lot of Star Wars games. I mean, you're talking Atari 2600 era, arcade, Nintendo, Sega um you know playstation n64 gamecube like modern stuff like the star wars battle pod and pc games i mean there's just so much it's like how could you possibly do an entire like a stream covering all of that so i hope he paces himself but anyway yeah he's gonna be doing that tonight and i think into tomorrow so he'll either do like a, a marathon like all-nighter or <laughs> it'll be a two-parter I don't have the kind of energy to do something like that. Like, if you can, good for you. But, yeah. That's a lot. Oh, for some reason, we don't have the Discord up. Let me, uh, let me bring that up here. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so we do our live questing on Saturdays, 6 to 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. Unless we're taking a break, but this uh, this week we plan to do that. Um, we're still doing the Frozen Horror. At some point we'll be switching over and doing something else. I mean, I'm just thinking time-wise, it's like, okay, we'll be finishing the Frozen Horror just about the time that the... Uh, 
ElfQuest pack is coming out, so it's like, would we launch immediately into it or do something else in between? Unless I start doing games like multiple times a week, in which case we could get some other quests in. Because I noticed the game system quests go really fast compared to Frozen Horror. Frozen Horror takes like three or four sessions to finish, except for the solo quests. They're long. I have seen some people that have finished in half the time. There's that one guy, what's his name? Something something PhD on YouTube. His quests take like 90 minutes to two hours. Uh, and he's doing the Frozen Horror with his wife, I think. And I don't know how he does go so quick. But I know I go a bit slower because I'm waiting for the chat. I'm interacting with the chat. And yeah, we chit-chat and get distracted and everything. But it is possible, possible to play faster. But still, I mean, if you think the Frozen Horror quests are like at least twice as long as the game system quests. Well, time to end work and go home. See you in a bit. Thanks, Eudoxio. Appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate you joining us. And everybody else, too. Uh, Violets underscore TV. Welcome. Yeah, I've had to ban some bots. So, I mean, I, I welcome people to the stream always, give them the benefit of the doubt, but sometimes they turn out to be bots. And it's like, if you're a bot and I banned you, well, you don't have feelings, so you don't mind. But to everybody who's legit, welcome. All right. So uh, last time, let's see. I mean, in the spirit of Star Wars, I'm thinking we should probably dive into this Empire Strikes Back one because we did get a good ending on the last one. Check out that cool hologram on there. So yeah, this is uh, Choose Your Own Adventure Star Wars. And again, this is, uh, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, infringe on anybody's rights here with this. This is, I mean, I, I'll give my review at the end. I'll tell you what I think. And I'm only reading selections from it. This is not this is story time. This is fun for fun. But yeah, we did Wizards, Warriors, and you, and we we keep getting thwarted. <laughs> this is this is trickier than than I thought. Um, but I don't know if we have time to really dive into this one today. Maybe another time. We'll see. Because I really only have an hour. Like you guys really got me going on this, and you know it was exciting. Um, I really want to do this one sometime. Horrors of the Haunted Museum. So this is Twist a Plot. I there's a really fun one. Um, the t when I was a kid, we had this thing called the book order at school and it was an obvious gimmick. It's like, yeah, they get kids to read more, but they also get money from these books. They get you to order these books and it was almost always like just fluff, fun things. But, um, I was introduced to the series, twist a plot series. It was the golden sword of dragon walk and midnight at monster mansion. So you had like the fantasy and you had the horror. At least one of them was R.L. Stein. I forget if the other one was. My copy is like way over there. But anyway, yeah, Horrors of the Haunted Museum. I was like, yeah, I'm definitely getting this. And as a kid, like, this would have creeped me out a little bit. Because my imagination was pretty vivid and still is. Look at that. But still, I enjoyed these kind of books. And I would just get stacks of these from the library and just read them. But having your own copy. I mean, my copies are really beat up. And they've got that musty old book smell. <laughs> I mean, there's something about paperback books I like. The new books, they have a certain smell to them, and then the old books have a certain smell. I mean, yeah, you obviously don't want, like, moldy books, but anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to do a little bit of reading here. So I should be playing some Star Wars music. Unfortunately, it's all copyright heavy stuff and audio jungle. They're going to get me. So instead of that, yeah, R.G. Austin. Some of these are pseudonyms. Yeah, Vampire Spies and Alien Beings. This was one that I enjoyed as a kid. It, reading it again, it isn't as deep as I remember it, because I think in my head I was imagining like all this other stuff that was happening. Um, like it was inspiring me. Like, oh man, this would be so cool if it, you know, you were really in it and it was a movie that you were like living through. But when you read it, it's like, oh, it's actually pretty short. But you know, when you're eight years old, ten years old, it's uh, it's pretty amazing. So I'm glad that these are still out there, even if they're not as popular as they once were. Castle No Return. I think this is another one where I just... Which Way Books. That's another series. So yeah, there's so many of them. I mean, people say Choose Your Own Adventure, but that's really only like a certain brand. And they're pretty protective of that brand. So if you call it Choose Your Own Adventure, but it's not, <laughs> you could be in trouble. But yeah, Wizards, Warriors, and You. Time Machine. Um, and a lot of branded ones. Narnia, Doctor Who, Dungeons and Dragons. There was... um. A Lord of the Rings one, too, called Middle-Earth. 
I think it was just called Middle Earth or Adventures in Middle Earth, something like that. I never owned those. I'd like to get some, but they're like super expensive. And of course you had Lone Wolf and you had Way of the Tiger. There were some historical ones and you know, you can still find them. There's board games based on Choose Your Own Adventure. But anyway, let's read um, The Empire Strikes Back. Star Choose Your Own Star Wars Adventure. So this is Christopher Golden. This is from like the special edition era, so I didn't have this as a kid. But yeah, we already read the A New Hope one. All right, so we got about 55 minutes. Let's uh, let's dive into this one here. So let's give you something to look at, I guess, with these different pictures. I don't think we'll need these dice. One thing about these Star Wars books, I mean, I, I enjoy them, but I think they're definitely written for younger kids or they're deliberately simplified. I mean, look at these big text. It's big. It's larger print. It's a smaller book. I think it's definitely designed for like kids who like the Star Wars movies, but they don't want to like venture too far from the movies. So if I had one criticism for this, it would be that they should have incorporated more options like what if you run far from the the movie events and you do have some other adventure rather than just saying oh you didn't do what the characters in the movie did therefore game over it's like ah you know you've got all this expanded universe stuff you could just have a whole other adventure you know star go star wars infinities on them of course then the book would be bigger but yeah there's kids that want to do everything like the characters did in the movie like they want to be alongside luke skywalker when he's fighting darth vader they want to be, you know, flying an X-Wing in the Battle of, you know, Yavin or whatever. They don't want to be just off on some totally different planet doing something completely different. But I think that could have enhanced the story. Well, anyway. Yeah, it seems like there's fewer choices. Okay, we begin. It's cold. Freezing, in fact. You can't believe that a planet as frozen as Hoth exists in your universe. You do not want to go back outside. But you cho you, you chose this life. You were born and raised far away on the planet Tatooine, a dust ball where moisture farming is big business and where twin suns shine every day. But you and your best friend, Luke Skywalker, always wanted to be fighter pilots, not moisture farmers. You pause for a minute and remember the remarkable events that changed your life so completely. Not so long ago, you and Luke had a chance to taste excitement when you were drawn into the rebellion against the evil empire. Well, I'll just pause for a second. The ending we got was basically like, we did it better than the characters in the movie. Like we actually, you know, put things uh, in place so that the, you know, the Death Star would be destroyed. The uh, Empire would be defeated. I mean, this might not even take place at all, but you know, it, it, there's nothing that says you had to read that book first. So anyway, yeah, you were drawn into the rebellion against the evil Empire. During your adventures, you were joined by the aging Jedi Knight, Ben Kenobi, a young rebel leader named Princess Leia, yeah, I don't think Ben got killed in the one we did, so we got a really good ending. We better than the movie. <laughs> I mean, less dramatic. Um, a roguish intergalactic smuggler named Han Solo and his first mate, the Wookiee Chewbacca, as well as a pair of droids called R2-D2 and C-3PO. With this mis mismatched crew, you and Luke helped lead the rebellion to an important victory. Luke himself fired the blast that destroyed the Death Star, the Empire's most fearsome weapon. So, learn more. Still no choices yet. However, the war against evil is far from over. The Rebel Alliance had to abandon its secret base despite its victory when the Imperial Starfleet followed the Millennium Falcon to Yavin 4 and launched an offensive that the Rebel fleet could not hope to win. You are now a member of Rogue Squadron, a division of X-Wing fighter pilots hidden at a secret base on the ice planet Hoth. Luke is the squadron leader. Luke and the other Rebel leaders have realized that the Empire will be searching for you. As part of the setup for Hoth security, sensors must be hidden all around the Rebel base. Along with Luke and Han Solo, you volunteered to plant these sensors. You're standing in the hangar bay next to Luke when Han Solo saunters over and interrupts your thoughts. Let's go, folks, he says. It's a little early, but we've got a lot of sensors to place today. I'll get the Tauntaun saddled, you say. Great, Han cries sarcastically. We can all... Work on our suntans. Don't forget that heavy-duty underwear, kids. Brave the cold. I'm not going to do the voices perfectly, but it's kind of fun to try. 
Outside the base, the three of you ride tauntauns, large, leathery-skinned animals well-suited to the cold on Hoth. During the day, at least. At night, Hoth's surface isn't fit for any living thing, except perhaps the horrible Wampa ice creatures. You, Luke, and Han split up and spend several hours planning sensors. After a while, you regroup to check on each other's progress. By the way, uh, those of you who are unfamiliar with what we're doing, we're reading a game book here. So that means in if you're watching live on Twitch, on YouTube, this is not live. But if you're watching live on Twitch, in the Twitch chat over to the right, um, you're going to see the chat itself, of course, and it'll say send a message. Underneath that is a little uh, purple and orange symbol. Looks like a treasure chest. You click on that, you can use your channel points, gold coins, to uh, make a choice. So there's like option one, option two, etc. If it's not working, you can just type your response in the chat. But when we get to a choice, you can influence my decision. We can have a vote on what we should do. So just letting you know that's how it works. Because, I mean, I can just pick what I want. I've never read this book before. This is the first my first reading. But at the same time, if you want to help me out, participate, you can do that with your channel points. It only takes one gold coin to pick an option. All right. So you're going to plant the sensors. After a while, you regroup to check on each other's progress. Have either of you picked up any life reading so far? Luke says. All I'm picking up are saddle sores, you mutter, shifting uncomfortably on top of your tauntaun. I came across a carcass. Looked a couple of days old, Han says. Probably killed by one of those wampa. They'll go after anything they can find. Listen, we placed all our sensors and I'm cold. I'm going back to the base. You two coming? I saw a meteorite come down not far from here. I don't want to check it out first. It won't take long, Luke replies. What about you? Han asks you. So here's our first choice. Option one, we stick with Luke and try to find the meteorite if we go with Han to the warm rebel base. So, okay, so go, go with Luke, check it out, go with Han, back to the base. So vote now. If you're live in Twitch with us, make your choice. Option one, Luke. Option two, Han. Now, if you've seen the movie, you know what happens. But are the book authors going to follow that, or are they going to do something else? I'm just realizing you're not seeing much of this. All right, what do you what do you guys think? All right, we're gonna start the timer. If you guys don't uh, make a decision, I'll just I'll just pick one for you. All right, so option one, go with Luke to check out the meteorite that hit the ground near here. Option two, go back with Han to the warm rebel base. I'm thinking if we stick around, we're going to get attacked by creatures. But maybe we can help Luke out, or maybe we'll get killed. <laughs> if we go back with uh, Han, I suppose we're going to have to go clean up the mess after Luke gets attacked. Because in the movie, we remember he gets ambushed by the Wampa. Spoilers from 1980. I know that says four minutes and 24 seconds, but I think we're just going to give people 10 more seconds because I know there is a delay. There's always a delay. We'll give you 10 more seconds to make a decision, option one or option two. Anybody vote with your channel points? I mean, I'm torn on what to do because with the last book... It's like we went with Luke and then it ended prematurely. So it's like, okay, so we're not... It's like, are we supposed to do what the characters in the movie did? Or are we supposed to stay out of their way? 
so that they can do what they did. I think it'd be more fun to go with Luke, but at the same time, I think the safest choice would be page 84, which is to go with Han. So, okay, we're going to go with Han unless anybody objects. Let me just double check the chat. I hate to miss anybody's brilliant um, statement. Got Elver, Galviler, and Violet's TV. All right, I voted for option two, so we're going with Han. Let's get rid of that timer because we're not using it right now. Yeah, I kind of redid all my cameras this time. Again, this is set up for uh, tomorrow night. You return to the base with Han. Shortly after you reach it, night falls. Outside, the wind whips ice across the surface of Hoth, and the temperature has dropped so low that the air is barely breathe breathable. Nothing could survive out there very long. As you change clothes in your quarters, there is a knock at the door. Enter, you call. The door slides open to reveal Princess Leia on the other side. Behind her, C-3PO and R2-D2 stand in the corridor. Princess, you say. Have you come to join me for dinner? <laughs> but even as you ask, you notice that Leia looks worried. Have you seen Luke since you came in since you came back in? she asks. No, you reply. We didn't come back together. He wanted to check out some meteorite he saw come down. He's probably with Han. I've been trying to reach Han, but he, he doesn't answer. I haven't spoken to anyone who's seen Luke since this morning, Leia says with concern. I have a meeting right now. Could you could you help Leia? Alright, again, not a lot of choices. No problem, you say. I'm sure Han is tinkering with the Falcon again. I'll see if he knows where Luke is. We will accompany you, C-3PO says. You hurry off while the droids hustle to keep up. 3PO is constantly complaining, as always, and R2, beep, R2 beeps angrily at him. Don't try to blame me, R2. I don't actually ask. I didn't actually ask you to turn on the heating system. I merely commented that it was freezing in the princess's chamber. 3PO says. R2 beeps and tweedles a response. I really don't know how we're going to dry out all of her clothes, 3PO says sadly. As R2 argues with 3PO, you tune out their conversation. Soon you enter the hangar. Across the bay, you see Chewbacca on top of the Falcon and Han Solo standing under the ship. You took what apart? Han yells up to Chewie. What are you doing fine-tuning the hyperdrive now? Look at that mess. Are you crazy? As Chewbacca growls an angry response, you approach Han. He sees you coming with the droids and spins around to confront you. Now what? He barks. Deal with Han. I feel like I might be missing some like big reveal <laughs> from, uh, from PulseCon. Let me just quickly check over here and see if there was something. I don't think they're talking about HeroQuest, but at the same time, you know, I've been wrong before. See, Marvel, lots of Marvel superheroes. Some guy doing some DJ thing. Yeah, I don't see anything of interest to me personally as a Hero Quest fan. Power Rangers, Fortnite. some comedy thing all right yeah there that's it's only day one i think it's a two-day show yeah so angus mcbain was asking what jacer j's um oh yeah i got it wrong the name of jacer j's um youtube channel is war builder j22 i kept saying war builder 22 j <laughs> so i was the one that got it backwards yeah sorry about that so it's war space builder space 22 or j 
22. Excuse me. Okay. Just checking the Discord here. So Virg posted a picture. It shows Monsters, Inc. It shows Dune, I think. Indiana Jones, Godfather, and Lord of the Rings. The Hobbit. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm just checking the uh, Discord here real quick. Just taking a pause. Amalgamash. It's going to do a video. See, whenever we talk about speculation, there's kind of like wishful thinking. Like, well, this is what I want, want it to be. This is what other people want it to be, but what's really happening? We don't know. Don't have a lot of data. Other than a picture that was clearly meant to get us speculating. And then a couple of comments saying, no, 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 it's not that. It's not that. All right. Well, with no earth-shattering updates, let's go back to the reading. We're doing The Empire Strikes Back. Choose your own adventure. Uh, so you, you go up to Han Solo. Leia's been trying to reach you on your comm link, you tell him. I turned my comm link off. He says, I don't want to talk to her anymore. It's bad for my disposition. Well, if you had it on, you say, ang you say angrily with Han, you know the princess is concerned about Luke. Nobody knows where he is. What do you mean nobody knows, Han says, suddenly serious. He was only a couple minutes behind us when we rode in. That was more than two hours ago. My point exactly, you say. Deck officer, Han yells, deck officer. The officer rushes over. Yes, sir, Captain Solo. Has Commander Skywalker come back? Han asks sharply. Commander Skywalker hasn't come through the main shield door. It's possible he came in through the south entrance. The deck officer replies, it's possible, Han yells. It's possible. Why don't you go and find out? You suggest to the officer. It's already dark and getting colder every minute, Han adds angrily. Where's Luke? A few seconds later, the deck officer returns. Sir, Commander Skywalker hasn't come in the south entrance either, he says anxiously. Nobody's heard from him since before you came in. You and Han stare at each other. We have to go after him, you say. Han nods. He turns to the deck officer and asks, Have the techs got those snow speeders working? Falcons in pieces right now. We don't have anything that can fly in a Hoth blizzard, sir, the officer replies. Those win winds would smash you down before you got halfway to... All right, Han snaps. Forget it. Tauntauns, you ask? Tauntauns, Han replies. But your tauntauns will freeze before you, first, before you reach the first marker, deck officer argues. Even with insulated suits on, if you end up on foot, you're dead. Maybe, you say. But if we, if we don't go, Luke will definitely die out there all alone. You can't leave Luke out in the cold. Turn to page 86. All right. I think after this we're going we're gonna to call it. I mean, unless we get a sudden death. <laughs> a short time later, you and Han ride your tauntauns. And thanks, everybody, for joining us, by the way. A short time later, you and Han ride your tauntauns out of the base into the raging blizzard. Between the snow and the dark, it's hard to see anything. You try to reach out with what little skill in the force you've learned. After three minutes, you can't feel your fingers, your feet, or face anymore. Every time you cry out Luke's name, your throat feels frozen. Luke, you shout, ignoring the cold. Tauntauns aren't doing too well, Han tells you. He's right, the Tauntauns are wheezing and slowing down in the cold. They won't survive for long. Luke, Han cries, Luke! Then you sense something to the left. You turn. Dimly, you make out a spot on the ice darker than the rest. A spot that doesn't move. Luke! You shout. Both you and Han jump off your tauntauns and run to Luke's side. He's delirious, thinking you or Han must be his old friend, Ben Kenobi. Luke, speak to me, kid, Han says. Get him to sit up, you suggest. So cold, so cold, Luke mumbles. Warmer now, I want to go to sleep. Keep Luke awake. Okay, so we found him. We're, there's a picture of us uh, trying to get him out of the snow. Trying to get him up. He's got hypothermia, probably. Mm. 
Warmer, you ask? No, Luke, that means you're freezing. Fight it. Don't go to sleep, Han shouts. Whatever you do, stay awake. Come on, give me a sign, kid. Suddenly, Han's tauntaun cries out weakly and falls over. What now? Han snaps. We'll never make it back. The three of us on one tauntaun? Grab Luke's lightsaber. Cut my tauntaun open. Get him in there and keep him warm until we can set up the emergency shelter. You're not sure Han's plan is going to work. But you also wonder whether you could survive the trek back to the base on foot. Okay, uh, voting time for those of you on Twitch live. Go along with Han's plan, so cut the tauntaun open and throw Luke inside the corpse of the beast of burden. Or argue with Han, <laughs> option two. Well, the thing is, it's like it works in the movie, but would it work in real life? You know, supposedly that was based on a rumor that somebody heard. Like, oh, well, they smell bad on the outside. Okay, so we cut the option one, cut the tauntaun open. Option two, argue with Han about what to do. So I'll just put those in the chat. While we're arguing, Luke might die from the cold, is the thing. Are they going to correct the movie and say, no, that wouldn't work? I mean, it's an alien species. I'm tempted to say option one if I had to pick. But you guys in the chat, you can uh, you can influence the decision. Vote now if you'd like. If you're just listening to us while you're doing something else, I understand. If you're not close to your keyboard or whatever. All right, I'll give you guys, since it's a 10, 10 second delay, maybe I'll give you like 30 seconds to decide. All right, so once again, option one, take Han's advice, cut open the Tauntaun and put Luke inside. Maybe it'll warm him up. Option two, argue with him about what to do. Remember, he's cold and delirious. We just found him out there. We're getting cold. Our tauntauns are dying. Of course, Han's tauntaun's already dead, we presume. So you're not actually killing it. You're just cutting it open while it's still warm. All right. Well, since I'm not hearing anybody in the chat uh, making a decision now, you guys watching us on the replay on YouTube are probably like smacking your foreheads. No, why did you do that? <laughs> but uh, don't worry. We'll uh, we'll probably revisit this if it's fun. You know, we'll try it again. But uh, yeah, I, I'm thinking option one. Let's just go with what happened in the movie. Might as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and put my cast my vote. All right. Let's go along with Han's plan. You stare at Han for a moment, unwilling to cut open the beast. Get to it, Han orders. It's going to feel disgusting, smell even worse, but it'll keep Luke alive while we set up the emergency shelter. You follow his instructions. Even as you cut open the dead Tauntaun, the other falls over onto the snow. You feel sorry for the beast, but you concentrate on saving Luke's life and making sure you and Han live to see the morning. Together, you and Han set up the emergency shelter and move Luke into it. You climb in after him, hoping your combined body heat and the shelter's own reserves will keep you warm until morning. You're exhausted and drained by exposure to the cold. It isn't long before you drift off to sleep. Sweet dreams. All right. You wake in the morning inside the emergency shelter. Your eyes are closed, and you can hear the crackle of Comlink static. You also hear the sound of snoring. It's Luke, right next to you. You sit up, thrilled to realize that you're all still alive. Han, you say, shaking. Solo awake, get up! Han stretches and yawns, then suddenly stops in mid-stretch. He glances over at you, then Luke, then finally laughs. We made it through the night, he cries. Just then, the static crackle of the comlink cuts off and is replaced by the greatest sound you've ever heard. The voice of your rescuer. 
Echo Base? Echo Base? This is Rogue 2. The voice belongs to Zev, an X-Wing pilot. You realize he must be flying overhead. Rescue is here. Han picks up the comm link and speaks. Rogue 2, this is Solo, he says. Do you copy? This is Rogue 2. Zev replies from his X-Wing high above. I hear you. Do you copy? Got you loud and clear, Zev. Han replies happily. Good morning. Nice of you to drop by. I've got your homing beacon on my screen. Zek says. Be right with you. You'll be warm soon on page three. You take the comm link from Han and speak into it. Rogue 2, you say. Make sure there's a med team standing by. Commander Skywalker needs immediate treatment. Short time later, you're all back at the base. Luke is in the med lab, and you and Han, finally warm, walk over to the command center to see Leia. As you enter, you see her huddled over a bank of sensor monitors with General Rykan and C-3PO. Everyone looks worried. Leia, what is it? Han asks. Something wrong? Sensors just found an unidentified blip. Lay explains. We're trying to pin it down. I don't like the sound of that, you say. We picked up something outside the base in Zone 12, General Rykin explains. It's definitely metallic, and it's transmitting something. Pardon me, Mistress Leia, uh, 3PO interpret interrupts. <laughs> Can't even read. I am fluent in over six million forms of communication. This signal is not used by the Alliance. In fact, I think it is highly probable that it is an Imperial code. Sounds like trouble. I'm going to check it out, you say. I'll call in what I find. In the meantime, we should all assume this thing is the enemy. Leia glances at you. You realize that you have spoken out of turn. She is in charge, and you should have waited. You check in with the med lab and make sure Luke is ready to travel, Leia tells you. Han. Do you mind checking this thing out? Han laughs. You're just trying to keep me around, princess, he says. But I'll do it. Strictly self-interest, of course. As long as me and Chewie and the Falcon are stuck here, I want to know what's going on. Take Chewbacca with you, Leia suggests. We've got to find somebody to keep keep you out of trouble. Finally, she turns to Rykin. General, she says, prepare for an evacuation. If this is a probe, we're going to have to get off this planet fast. Still no choices. It isn't long before Han and Chewbacca report back to say that they found and destroyed an Imperial probe droid. Immediately the evacuation begins. Luke, emerging from the healing fluid of a Bacta tank, senses the fear and activity. What is it? he asks. The Imperials have found us, you tell him. That's going to change things, he says, sighing. Rogue Squadron is going to protect the evac ships, evac ships as they leave the planet, but for now... The majority of our forces are on the ground or in snow speeders. The Imperials are sure to use walkers, you say. No question, Luke agrees. We don't have time to waste. I'm going to take the command of the rogues flying snow speeders. If you want to join me, you can. Otherwise, you can help with the evacuation. Make sure Leia gets off the planet safely. Maybe fly one of the X-Wings and guard the transport ships. Interesting. So it looks like they're giving us the option to participate in the Battle of Hoth or to get out of there. Okay. Suddenly in the distance, you hear the sounds of battle. Snow speeders fire their blasters. Imperial walkers retaliate with thundering explosions. They're here, Luke says. He looks at you for a decision. If you go with Luke and fly a snow speeder, you can buy the rest of the rebellion more time to escape. Oh, and get killed in the process. But if you fly with Rogue Squadron, you will actually be protecting the escaping transports and get killed in the process. Not to mention Princess Leia. You may have a better chance to survive the evacuation of Hoth yourself. Okay, so decision time. Option one, go with Luke and fly a snowspeeder against the walkers. Option two, decide to help with the evacuation. I don't know, they both be kind of cool. The evacuation, we don't see much of it in the movie. It's just kind of, they fly out of there, the iron cannon is shooting. The Battle of Hoth would be cooler, I think, but we might get killed. We could help out Luke. Okay, so um, yeah, if you're um, if you're in the Twitch chat, use your gold coins. 
So choose option one, go with Luke and the snow speeders, or option two, help with the evacuation of Hoth. All right, I'll give you 30 seconds to decide. Really should have grabbed a bookmark. Usually I have one. So go with Luke and fly a snow speeder against the walkers or decide to help with the evacuation. Yeah, the Strange Bus is doing his big uh, Star Wars extravaganza tonight, so check him out on Twitch. And we do plan to be doing the rant cast again, maybe even next week, because we didn't we didn't uh, get to do it yesterday. Okay, so it looks like that was the end of the Pulse Con stream. It's over now, and they really didn't do any other Hero Quest stuff, which is expected. We didn't expect them to, but maybe tomorrow. Or maybe that's pretty much all we got from Encarmine is that cool picture of the new expansion to tease us all. All right, so I'm not hearing anything from the chat, so I think we're just gonna make a decision. Ah, oh, man, I'm just which would which would be better? I'm gonna say help with the ev evacuation. That's not something we got to see much. I mean, Luke would be on his own, but he seemed to do okay in the movie. Maybe he needed your help to complete it. I don't know. I'm going to say option two is my guess. Again, I haven't read this book before, so I've seen Empire Strikes Back many times. Anybody else disagree? I'm saying option two. All right, we're going with option two. I'd better help with the evacuation, you tell Luke. Princess Leia is too important to the rebellion, and I'll feel better knowing she's getting off the planet safely. Luke nods and moves out with the other pilots, who will be flying snowspeeders against the Imperial troops and are now landing all over Hoth. Soon the Rebel Command Center comes under attack, but the de defensive shields hold up for the moment. You help load supplies and personnel on board the transports. When half the transports are gone and the Imperial attacks are growing worse, you realize it's time to get Leia out. You find her in the command center, barking orders as though she was born to command, which, of course, she was. Get the wounded aboard the transport, she shouts. Consolidate all remaining units in the central defensive arc. Yes, Her Highness, the command center controller replies. Leia? You say quietly, not wanting to distract her, but knowing it's time to get going. Why aren't you in the in an X-Wing, Lieutenant? She asks. Explain yourself. Luke asked me to make sure you get off Hoth safely, explain. Is he alright? Luke, I mean. Did the snowspeeders take the walkers down? Most of the walkers were destroyed. Luke is on his way back to the transport bay, Leia explains. But I'm not going anywhere, not yet. Take 3PO if you want. With all due respect... Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> this is C-3PO talking. With all due respect, Princess Leia, C-3PO huffs, Master Luke ordered me to remain with you at all times. We've lost two more snowspeeders, Princess, Controller reports. Recall them all, Leia orders. Have the pilots get to their fighters. This is it. Prepare to evacuate. Leia, you say more forcefully this time. We have to go. Now. You're too important to the Rebellion to put yourself at any extra risk. Suddenly Han appears behind you. Me and Chewie want to get the Falcon out of here right away. But first we're going to make sure you get on that transport. Aren't we, kid? That's right, Han. You agree? Princess? Leia shakes her head and smiles at Han. You mean you and the Wookiee actually fixed that flying bucket of bolts you call a ship? <laughs> Charming. To the last. Suddenly the command center is rocked by Imperial Walker blasts. Sparks fly and lights dim. The defensive shields are taking a beating. Princess! Imperial stormtroopers have entered the base! The controller shouts. And all but one of the transports have evacuated. Leia, that's, that's it. Han assists. It's over. We've got to go. For a moment, Leia pauses. Then she shakes her head. Controller, give the evacuation code. All troops disengage. 
Then get to the final transport, all of you, she orders. She turns to you and Han. All right, let's go. With C-3PO clanking behind, you and Han rush Leia down a corridor. Han has her by the arm, but Leia pulls away. Han, will you kindly stop trying to yank my arm off? I'm hurrying, she snaps. Nice, princess, Han replies. You try and do somebody a favor, and what did, what do you get? Before Leia can answer, there's a huge explosion. As the defensive shields are again hit, the whole tunnel shakes. The ceiling just ahead of you crashes down, blocking your way. Han! Leia! You shout. Are you alright? You look around. Everyone seems alright. Well, that's going to be a problem, Leia says, her sarcasm obvious. You must have hit the power generators, you add. Leia sighs and looks at Han. Looks like I'm with you, flyboy, she says. Han picks up his comm link and contacts the last transport, which is waiting for Leia. Transport, this is Solo, he says. You better take off right away. The South Tunnel's collapse, and we can't get to you. I'll get the princess out here in the Falcon. Our copy, Solo, transport pilot replies. Move fast. You're only one step ahead of the stormtroopers. Good luck. I get nervous when people start wishing me luck, on grumbles. He turns to you. What about you, kid? Now you probably want to get back to your X-Wing, but if you backtrack, you'll probably run into stormtroopers. Want to come with us? All right, so choice time for you live on Twitch. Uh, do we go with Han and Leia? That's option one. Option two, we try to make it back to the X-Wing. I mean, it says we've got limited Jedi powers. But are we really... I mean, do we have a lightsaber? <laughs> um, I don't think we do. Because Luke has Ben's lightsaber, I, or Anakin's lightsaber, I guess. Maybe, well, see, that's the thing. Like, in this version, did, did Ben get killed? What happened? If he did, did I get his lightsaber or, or not? Are we going to be able to take on stormtroopers? How good are we? It would seem like going with Hanalea would be the way to go. Be the safest choice. So we got option one, we got option two. Option one, go with Han and Leia on the Falcon. Option two, try to get to the X-Wing. So choose option one with Han and Leia to the Falcon on the Falcon. Or option two, get to our X-Wing. Yeah, this is um, Choose Your Own Adventure, Empire Strikes Back. We did our uh, hero quest discussion. Now we're just reading some game books. All right, so make your choice. If you're on YouTube, you're just waiting for us to make a choice. I don't know. I'm I'm uh, thinking option one, but again, it's like that's what they did in the movie. But who's to say that's going to be the right one? Because you're an extra character that wasn't in the movie originally. So vote now. Give you another 20 seconds. Yeah, Fridays are the day that we get these big reveals. Either nothing happens or there's a big reveal. It's just it's how it is. All right, I think that's enough time. I think we're just going to vote. I'm just going to pick. Let the GM decide. I'm going to go with option one. Anybody disagree? Please let me know now. If you're on YouTube, just hold your horses. You're going to find out what happens. I think we're going to go with Han and Leia, option one. I'd be crazy to go back to my ship. Let's go. The tunnel shakes again, hit by more fire from the Imperials. Along with Leia, Han, and 3PO, you hurry back to the repair bay. Chewbacca already has the Millennium Falcon's engines running. You all run up the ramp just as stormtroopers break in. Hey kid, blast those guys, will ya? Han calls down to you. You whip out your blaster and fire at the stormtroopers. Suddenly Darth Vader appears in the open doorway. Luckily the ramp starts to rise beneath you. Seconds later, you are strapped into one of the freighter's gun seats. Firing at Imperial ships as the Falcon blasts out of Hoth's atmosphere. C-3PO tries to tell Han something, but Han ignores him, determined to get you all out alive. Under fire from TIE fighters and two Star Destroyers, Han tells everyone to sit tight. It's time for hyperdrive. But nothing happens. That's what I've been trying to tell you, sir, 
Lights, 3PO says. I noticed earlier that the hyperdrive motivator was damaged. It's impossible to go to light speed. We're in trouble, you say. Big trouble, Leia agrees. Uh-oh. Now hold on, Han says. I think I've got an idea. While Han pilots the ship, you and Chewbacca try to fix the hyperdrive. A short while later, the ship is slammed several times. You're afraid it's the Imperials, but no. The Star Destroyers are still after you, but they haven't caught up. The reality is worse. Han piloted the ship into an asteroid field. Han, what are you doing? Leia cries. The Imperials would have to be crazy to follow us in here, Han declares happily. Another asteroid slams the ship. Han, you're crazy, you shout. Trust me, he replies. Sir, the possibility of successfully navigating an asteroid field is... 3BO begins. Han turns on him angrily and yells, Never tell me the odds! You shout for Han to watch out. He swerves the ship just in time to avoid an enormous asteroid, hundreds of times larger than the Falcon itself. You can see that the TIE fighters have begun to follow the ship into the asteroid field, but their pilots aren't as good as Han, and many of, many of them are destroyed. It's a famous asteroid chase. That was a cool scene. You said you wanted me to be around when I made a mistake. Well, Princess, this could be it, Han says. I take it back, Han, Leia cries. Several smaller asteroids smash into the ship. I might get in closer to that big one, Han says, pointing out the largest asteroid yet. Closer, you and Leia shout together. Han flies along the sur surface of the asteroid. The remaining TIE fighters are destroyed while trying to follow. A moment later, Han spots a cave and decides to land the ship inside it to make repairs. You're all relieved for the moment, to be protected from the asteroids. While the others disembark to repair the Falcon, you wait inside with C-3PO. From time to time, the cavern rumbles around the ship. Huh? Suddenly, you hear fluttering sounds on the hull of the ship. On the comlink, you call Han. Hey, Han, what's all that noise out there? Minox, kid, Han replies. Big, nasty, slimy pests will chew the heck out of the power cables. We don't get them off. She'll only take a minute. Outside, Han and Chewie start to fire at the Minox. They're blasted at the walls of the cavern. I guess they'd have those oxygen masks on, because... Yeah. I remember this was one of those scenes, like... There's so many scenes in Empire Strikes Back where fans are like, that breaks the laws of physics, that doesn't work. So people were saying, like, well, maybe the Falcon has, like, artificial gravity that ex and atmosphere that extends out from the ship, and, but they still need the masks because it's not that good or something. But, I mean, the movie doesn't tell you. It's just it's just a fantasy. Whatever. Outside, Han and, and Chewie start to fire at the Minox. Their blasts hit the walls of the cavern. It starts to quake again, as if in reaction to the blast. Suddenly, you know why. This cave is alive, you shout. If you don't get out of the cave right away, whatever kind of monster you're all inside might just swallow you down. You're tempted to take off now without waiting for the others. Every second counts. Okay, wait a minute. Take off without the others, option one. Option two, wait for your friends. Well, I think this is an easy one. So you just leave them behind inside the, the cave, cave worm. Space slug. Okay, this one seems an easy one. I don't know. If you guys don't mind, I'm going to go with option one. Or I'm not going to go with option one to take off without them. Option two, I'm going to stay with them. So option two, I'm going to wait. I'm just going to pick option two here. Han, Leia, get in here, you scream. You fire up the Falcon's engines as Han, Leia, and Chewbacca scramble inside. Chewie roars as he hits the controls. I thought they were going to say he when he hits his head. Hits the controls to close the ramp. Time to go. Slide over, kid. Han snaps. You move. You're a good pilot, but Han is the best there is. Look, the cave entrance, you shout. The open space ahead has begun to grow smaller. We're in some kind of beast, Han explains. Well, you already knew that. I guess you are just trying to make him feel, feel better. We don't get out of here. It's going to swallow us whole, and I don't want to be dessert. The huge creature's jagged teeth are sweeping down, narrowing your exit. Han turns the ship sideways. You barely slide through the opening before the creature's mouth closes. The thing thrusts forward, trying to bite at the escaping falcon, but it's too late. You've made it! Only only you, Solo, could pick a monster stomach to park in, Leia says, smiling, as relieved as you are to still be alive. 
Look, I got us out, didn't I? Han replies, even as he swerves the ship through the asteroids fast enough to make you dizzy. Look, I got out of here, didn't I? <laughs> Suddenly, an alarm goes off in the cockpit. We left out the fact that he got a kiss. He's got his moments. TIE Fighters, Han says angrily. They waited for us, and we can't jump to hyperspace in this asteroid field. Han does some fancy flying, and in moments, the Falcon is out of the asteroid field. He and Chewie start preparing the ship for hyperspace. But when Chewie hits the switch, the hyperdrive makes some nasty sounds and just dies. Uh-oh, Han mumbles. Chewbacca roars. Han glances down at the ship's scanners. Imperial Star Destroyer, coming straight at us, Han says excitedly. And this is good news, you ask? It is when we can't jump to hyperspace, Han replies. You're not making any sense, Solo, Leia cries. Sir, I'm afraid I don't understand, C-3PO begins. Somebody switch him off if if he opens his mouth again. Han roars, we're only going to get one chance. Chewie, ready the landing claw. Landing claw, you and Leia exclaim. What? There's no choices here. They're just having us read. Then Han does the impossible. He actually lands the Falcon on the rear section of the Imperial Star Destroyer's bridge. A short time later, when the destroyer dumps its garbage, Han releases the landing claw and allows the Falcon to float away inside the cloud of trash. So what, they went inside their shields somehow? They moved slowly so they could do that? I don't know. Ask the, ask the lore nerds to tell you. Because it happened in the movie, you can't deny it. This is great, Han, you say. But we've still got to find a, a safe port to repair the hyperdrive. We're in the Anoat system, Leia adds. Not much around here. Han is quiet for a moment, then he says, Lando! The Lando system? Leia asks. Lando's not a system, Han replies. He's a man. Lando Calrissian is a card player. Gambler. A real scoundrel. You'd like him. Calrissian is apparently an old friend of Han's from whom Han won the Millennium Falcon in the card game. He runs a gas mining operation in Cloud City, a huge floating city. It's far away, and it will take some time, but the Falcon can make it there. Can you trust this Calrissian? you ask. Of course not, Han says, but he's our only shot. Go to Cloud City. We're getting close to the end of our time here, everybody. Thanks for... Join us in HeroQuest fans, even though we're reading Star Wars. After a long journey to Bespin, you land in Cloud City and walk down the ramp from the Falcon. A door slides open to reveal several armed Cloud City security men and a tall, handsome, dark-skinned man dressed in blue and black with a stylish, light blue knee-length cape. Lando! On calls happily. Solo! Calrissian says, so it is you. I've got a bad feeling about this, you mutter. Han rushes you. Han shushes you. Calrissian stomps toward Han angrily. You slimy, double-crossing, no-good swindler. He snarls at Han. You've got a lot of guts coming to Cloud City after what you pulled. Calrissian takes a swing at Solo, and Han starts to duck. Then Calrissian breaks into a laugh and pulls Han towards him in a big hug. Ha! Calrissian says. How are you doing, you old pirate? It's good to see you. I never thought I'd catch up with you again. Han introduces you, Leia, and 3PO to Calrissian. Lando is very friendly to all of you, but especially to Leia. Especially to Leia. <laughs> Enjoy Lando's hospitality. Later on the main level inside Cloud City, Lando discusses business. He is the city's barren administrator, and it isn't an easy job. The Empire's power and the Rebellion's efforts have led to labor and supply problems. During the conversation, you notice that C-3PO has disappeared must have wandered off you think maybe for a cleaning after all you realized he hasn't had one since luke first became his owner back on tatooine only later after you've all been shown to your quarters does uh, chewbacca go out to look for 3po and come back with what's left of him someone has smashed the droid to pieces chewbacca sets about trying to put him back together just then lando arrives and asks everyone to join him in the banquet hall I don't know about the rest of you, you say as you head towards the smell of food, but I'm hungry. After a moment, Lando says, here's the banquet hall. The others start in. But you hold back a, a moment. Something doesn't feel right. Then Chewbacca pushes you from behind and you go inside. Inside the banquet hall stands Darth Vader. By his side is an armored figure who can only be the notorious intergalactic bounty hunter Boba Fett. This is trouble.
Faster than the wink of an eye, Han whips out his blaster and fires two shots at Darth Vader. But incredibly, Vader raises his hand and deflects the deadly attack. Just as quickly, Han's blaster is ripped from his hand and flies across the room straight into Vader's grasp. We, we would be honored if you would join us. Can't do the voice, but I'm trying. <laughs> Vader says, nodding to all of you. Han gives Leia an angry glare. I had no choice, Kyle Racing says. You stare at him. They arrived just before you did. I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry too, friend. Han snaps, furious at Lando. Vader turns his head to look at you. You can feel that he senses your Jedi training, but you know your power could catch him off guard should you, you suddenly attack him with it. Oh, so choice time. We can attack Darth Vader, or we can surrender. Interesting. So this is our chance. Because <laughs> I picture you trying to attack Darth Vader and just getting your butt kicked. Or maybe everybody else killed in the process. But we know from the movie he's trying to he's trying to capture Luke alive. And he doesn't really care about everybody else. But he knows that punishing everybody else, torturing them, is going to draw Luke in. But I don't know. You might be expendable. Do you attack Vader? I mean, I kind of, I'm kind of feeling feeling like a gambler's rush here because um, we're getting towards the end of our time. So let's uh, let's just put it out to the chat if anybody's still paying attention here, still awake. Option one, attack Vader. Option two, surrender. So choose option one, attack Darth Vader. Option or option two, surrender. And once again, this is Empire Strikes Back. Choose your own adventure. For those playing at home. So you can use your channel points to interact with us. Let me just double check. So we've still got El Viler and Violet's TV, which, sorry, Violet's TV, are you a bot or are you a live person? <laughs> oh, man. Well... I mean, Han didn't have much, much luck with his blaster, but what am I going to attack him with? Do I have a lightsaber? Or just, am I just attacking him with the Force, or am I going to shoot at him too? So Vader realizes I have the Force. Are we going to have a duel? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say I want to attack him. It may be the wrong thing, but let's go for it. Go out with a blaze of glory. So... Unless someone objects, all you people in the chat are going, man, why did you do that? Duh. All right, so I'm going to pick option one. Let's uh, let's take him on. Come on! We'll find out if we had a lightsaber after all. Just try to tackle him. It's probably suicide, but you have to give your powers a chance. Reaching out with the Force, using it as much as you can. You move swiftly with your lightsaber. Okay, you do have one. It erupts in a line of deadly light as you leap up onto the table. In three strides, you've reached Darth Vader. Before Leia can even shout for you to stop, you slash at him. He doesn't even have his lightsaber drawn. But the instant your lightsaber reaches Vader, his own saber flashes to life and stops your blade from striking its target. Then you are face to face with Darth Vader, the Dark Lord of the Sith, a powerful Jedi Knight enslaved by the dark side of the Force. You against him, one on one. Of course, you lose. Stormtroopers are summoned to transport you to the Spice Mines of Kessel, where you will spend the rest of your days paying for your hasty actions. The end. Well, you didn't get killed, but <laughs> you lose. <laughs> Just very, very simple like that. Okay. Well, that was the end. Um, some of you may be thinking, like, oh, man, he just threw the, he just threw the fight because he just wanted to end the book. You know, I just thought I wanted to see what, what the book would... Uh, what it would do, what, how it would respond to uh, that question. So, yeah, I guess my initial uh, thought on this is, much like the first book, it's interesting, f you know, from the standpoint of a Star Wars fan. I mean, obviously, this is written for little kids. Um, it gives you a little bit of what if stuff, like what if there was another character in the movie, because you're not taking the, the role of Han or... Luke or Leia or Lando or Chewbacca. I mean, you're just a, a brand new character that was inserted into the story. I'm Luke's best friend, you know? Like a lot of kids, just imagine if they were in the movie. And 
like you get to interact. I, I I notice that you get to take some of the lines from some of the other characters, so you feel like you're a part of things, but you're not overshadowing any of the main characters. Like they're still fated by destiny to do what they do in the movie, more or less. I think they could have taken more risks with these books. Like if I had to write this, I mean, I would have put in all kinds of stuff. Like you know, uh, main characters get killed <laughs> because of your actions or whatever. Or I mean, the fact that they allowed you to basically, um, you know, defeat the Empire more easily than the heroes in the movie did because they make mistakes. You know, they aren't the heroes aren't always right. I think that's good, but yeah, I I would have done a little bit more with this. I think this is a great attempt. Um, maybe if uh, if they did it like another another take on it would be interesting. I I want to say that there is another choose your own adventure set of Star Wars novels, but I think they're like original adventures. I think they're written more recently and they're just like brand new adventures, like not having to do with the movies. But I got these specifically what because they were a, about the Star Wars trilogy movies. And they have an advertisement in here for Micro Machines. Well, anyway, that was fun. I want to do some Wizards, Warriors, and you, but we talked about Hero Quest a lot more. So, anyway, it'll be interesting to see a new expansion pack. So, it looks like they've got us on the hook at least until 2024, maybe, for Hero Quest, which is pretty good. When you think about the original Hero Quest, I mean, 89 was when the first version came out in the UK, and then 93 was the last Dave Morris novel, 94 with the Amiga game, and then it kind of just faded out into obscurity until two years ago when we got the the new uh, the Pledge Drive, the Hasbro Pulse campaign. So, all right. Well, thanks to everybody who joined us and HeroQuest fans, um, whether on the Twitch live or on the YouTube replay. We'll be uh, Our plan is to play uh, some HeroQuest tomorrow night, so 6 to 10 p.m. Central Standard Time U.S. here on twitch.tv slash HeroQuestFans. And we'll do, be doing some more Frozen Horror action. Four hero slots open as usual, and then the people in the Quest chat and Twitch will be able to um, use their channel points to interact with us. Basically, allow the people who are controlling heroes and mercenaries to just kind of do what they do. The people in the chat are the ones who can buy stuff for either to help Zargon out with extra monsters and things, or to help the heroes out with like extra potions and things. Um, I have had heroes buy stuff for themselves, and it's like, okay, we're... I mean, it feels like cheating, so I that's why I, I disallow that. Um, I have had heroes buy monsters for themselves because they're bored, <laughs> which is like, well, that's one way to do it. It's like, yeah, yeah, throw some more monsters at me. I'm like, all right, okay. You know, I try to make, I try to keep it interesting but also make it somewhat fair because the uh, the Frozen Horror is an extremely difficult quest pack. I mean, for the most part, I don't have to pull any punches because it's already extremely difficult. And I'm not saying I want to do that either. Like, my philosophy as a GM is, like, I want people to have a good time, but at the same time, like, I'm okay if everybody gets killed and we have to start over. Like, sometimes that happens, you know? If the heroes die due to their own stupidity... Is that my fault as an evil <laughs> evil GM character, really? You know, but I'm not going to cheat to make it like unbearable for them either. So, that's how I that's how I play. Other people may play differently. But it's it's a fun it's a fun little game. It's easy to get into. I enjoy it. So, all right. Thanks everybody for joining us in HeroQuest fans. Uh see you tomorrow night. And if you want to go check out our friend uh, The Strange Bus, he's doing that Star Wars marathon. He won't be starting probably for a couple more hours. I want to say eight or nine is when he usually starts, but it sounds like it's going to be a long stream. So, yeah, go definitely go support him on that. And be checking the HeroQuest fans Discord because we may be getting little tidbits of news here and there, clarifications from Encarmine about our speculations about the new pack. Um, check uh, Yield In, of course, because we have a thread going about the new stuff, the new, the tidbits of news coming out. I'm sure there'll be other things, but um, I guess we'll find out over the next few months what happens. And if you pre-order the Rogue Air of Alathorn, let us know. Are you getting yours early, or what's happening? I don't plan to pre-order anything. I would much rather just order it when I know it's coming out. I mean, I did place my order for the Frozen Horror when I knew that people were getting it early. 
It's like, oh, well, if they really are delivering and I just have to wait a week or two, that's fine. Like, I'll buy it then. But I didn't want to do a pre-order and then have to wait six months or something. Um, and then have it be sold out or whatever. Not that the, the selling out is going to happen because they said after the debacle with the Guardian Knight, it's like no more of that. It's all retail now. I think they learned their lesson. So, seems like good things are ahead, are ahead for Hero Quest. So, all right, everybody take care. And, it, you know, for the poor people who are in the path of the hurricanes and everything, I mean, please be safe. Do, do the best you can. I, I wish the best for you. Um, if there's some relief effort you can donate to to help those folks out, go for it. Um, I know not everybody's in a good place right now, so I hope you're as safe as you can be. And, uh, We'll catch you next time. All right. Godspeed, everybody. Bye.